Hello. Good day to all my home course students. Today we are here to continue on the chapter 8, Manufactured Substances in Industries, Part 2. Today the main subtopic for our discussion is on glass and ceramics. So let's start. So what is the meaning of glass? What to say meaning? What is glass actually? Because they are substances. So there's no meaning to them. So now, so they are actually substances. So you can say that the major component of glass is actually sand, which is called chemical term silicon dioxide. So this is the molecular formula of silicon dioxide. Now, let's go to properties. Why glass is very popular amongst industries and also your daily usage? The main reason is because it is transparent and chemically inert. For instance, if you want to keep vinegar or some cooking substances, glass is one of the easiest and best to store. Why? Because it does not get corroded even if you store vinegar in it. Right? Or maybe some corrosive substances in it, they won't corrode. Okay? And second is, they are heat and can electrical insulators. So, they don't conduct electricity, they don't conduct heat. Second is, it is easy to clean. So, that is the reason why glass is very, very popular as a decoration and also mainly for cooking and also laboratory apparatus. Now, let's look at what are the types of glass? So here, if you look at any reference books, type of glass, these are the four types of glass discussed in your syllabus. Now, I am going to tell you now, they have all the attributes and characteristics explained to you already. But now, teacher is going to tell you how would you identify four types of glass from each other. Okay, so the types of glass, if you see the name of the glass, totally depends on the main substance that actually contributes to the name. For instance, let's go to the first type of glass which is soda lime glass. So the main substances or main um, constituent of soda lime is actually sodium carbonate. Sodium, another word for sodium is soda, they call it soda. Okay, so sodium carbonate, so that's where the word soda lime came in. Okay, so now soda lime or sodium Soda lime glass is actually uh, has a high thermal expansion but unfortunately it can't withstand heat. So that is the reason why it is used to make electrical bulbs, mirrors and glass containers. So please remember that soda lime glass you can't heat up. Now let's go to borosilicate glass. Again if you see one of the constituents of borosilicate you have three other um, constituents. Okay, so the substances that make up borosilicate, but here I am here to tell you how does the word borosilicate came in. So borosilicate, one of the main uh, constituents of borosilicate come from the word boron oxide. Can you see? Borosilicate, boron oxide. So that's one of the major components to make up borosilicate glass. Now, borosilicate has low thermal expansion and resistant to heat when heated. So it is actually heat insulator. So that is the reason why it is fairly um, useful or popular to make cookware because we need sometimes heat insulator as a cookware. Huh? So that's the reason why it is used as cookware and also boiling tubes and beakers. Okay? Why? Because sometimes when you put hot water in the beaker, you want it to just not to crack. So that is the reason why we use borosilicate glass. Now let's go to fused glass. Fused glass is actually the usual glass. So main is main substance or the ingredient is actually the silicon dioxide which is sand. Now what happens is the characteristics of a fused glass is optically transparent. They are optically transparent. Now please underline the word optical. So that means this shows that they are used as laboratory glassware, lenses, telescope and optical fibers. So that's the key point. Huh? Fused glass, optically transparent. So they are used as lenses, telescope mirrors and optical fibers. So can you see the connection? 
Now let's go to last one, lead glass. So lead glass uh, has lead to oxide in it. Okay, lead glass has lead to oxide in it. So that is where the lead glass come from. So if they ask for one of the uh, or the main ingredients to make lead glass, you can let, look for lead to oxide. Now the beauty of lead glass is actually it is has a very high refractive index that means can reflect light very nicely. So that is the reason why it is mainly used for decor as a decoration item or chandeliers. Okay, decoration item, tableware, crystal glassware and decorative glassware. Why? Because of the refractive index, they behave somewhat like diamond. They can re uh, reflect light somewhat like diamond. Okay, so nearest, somewhat nearer to diamond. Na? So that's the reason why it is used as a decorative ware. Alright, now let's go to ceramics. Now, what is the difference between ceramic and glass? Ceramic is actually very brittle. Brittle means they can uh, they can uh, break very easily, something like glass. But it is not as transparent as your glass. Ceramic is not transparent. Now, let's go to the components of ceramic. So, the main components are metal components such as aluminium oxide and semi-metal components such as boron nitrate and silicon carbide. Teacher repeat, main components, now we have two types, okay. So, two examples of components which form ceramic, which is metal components, which are usually aluminium oxide, Al2O3, and magnesium oxide, okay. So, I, I hope you are aware of these two substances, and semi-metal, which is called silicon uh, carbide, and boron nitrate, okay. So, boron nitrate. So, these are the two semi-metal, okay, components. So, can be either one of them. Now, let's go to properties and the bond of atoms. So, now what happens is, components, they com contain metal and semi-metal. So, this shows that the they have strong ionic and covalent, okay. So, they have strong ionic and covalent bond amongst the elements, okay. Again, uh, they have strong ionic and covalent bond amongst the elements. For instance, ionic bond, covalent bond because it's semi-metal, okay, and non-metal, okay. So, ionic and covalent bond. So, that is the reason why they are strong, hard, high melting and boiling point. So, that is another uh, best characteristics regarding ceramics, okay. Ceramics. Now, let's go to, but they break easily. Okay, they break easily. I mean, the melting and boiling point is strong and hard in the sense of uh, if you don't apply too much of force, they can withstand. But if you try to apply too much of force, they will break easily. Why? Because they are particles. Okay, the particles can't slide over each other like metal. So that is the reason why you when you try to shape them, what I mean, what they mean by breaks easily is when you try to shape them, you might be thinking, oh, they have semi-metal components, maybe I can shape them. No. What happens is they break easily when you try to shape them. Something like metal or malleable, they call it. Okay, but because the particles can't slide over one another easily, like how pure metal atom does. Now, let's go to the properties. So, why ceramic is as popular as glass? Properties is... One is because they are non-transparent. Of course, ceramic is non-transparent compared to glass. But they are chemically, again, they are chemically inert. Insulators, good insulators of heat and electric. But they are breakable. Okay, breakable. Huh? Now, let's go to classification of ceramic. One is traditional and at once. Okay, so traditional is where we use, we have simple. Okay, aluminium silicate, which is kaolin. Okay, so simple aluminium, alumino silicate. Okay, so alumino silicate, there's a combination of aluminium, oxygen and silicon. Okay, so alumino silicate, which is clay, we call it something like, okay, clay. So when they are mixed and they become, they can be molded easily. Okay, so you can mold them easily. Okay, so that's where you, pr you produce waste and all that. Okay, you can mold them easily. Now, let's go to second first is traditional, which is clay. Now, second is advanced. So, advanced is man-made. So, they are developed in variety forms. 
One is oxide. Okay, using aluminium oxide and zirconia. Okay, zirconia. Second is non-oxide advanced ceramic, which is silicon carbide and silicon nitride. Okay, nitrate, silicon nitrate. Okay, so both have silicon. So that is the reason why we have two types of classification of ceramics. Okay, so now, so traditional cowling, which can be molded easily, usually as a cookware. Okay, so it will be used as cookware and also some uh, to store water or something like that. Now, advanced is for, advanced is mainly used for, uh, maybe some, uh, uh, they are used for insulation, okay, nuclear reactor, engine parts, electrical insulator, electric parts. Why? Because they are very good at uh, uh, insulating electrical and heat. Now, at once, they have superconductivity, inert chemically, but hard. Okay, so they are superconductivity, they can conduct electricity at zero temperature, inert chemically. So that's the reason, another reason why they are used as electrical conductors. Okay, so they can conduct, conduct electricity. Now, superconductivity, inert chemically, but hard. Okay, so another, so this is all you need to know about ceramics. Now, two types of ceramics, two, not to say two types, but two ceramics of advanced ceramics that teacher would like to discuss here is uh, alumina, okay, alumina and zirconia. Alumina and zirconia, they have um, high hardness, they have high density, okay, so zirconia especially used to make for dental implants, okay, so dental implants, um, silicon sorry, alumina is used as bone substitute, okay, during orthopedic operation, okay, so alum, alumina is used as bone substance, uh, substitute on an orthopedic operation, zirconia is actually used in dental implants. Now, another example of advance that teacher would like to discuss is silicon carbide, which is this cutter. Now, see, this, this cutter is actually a powerful tool to cut concrete, metal, tiles, ceramic, stone, and all that. Okay, so that's why it is called silicon carbide. So, it is very hard and strong. That is the reason why they are used, they are used as this cutter. Now, tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is actually metal. Okay, a bit of metal called tungsten is, is here. So they are extremely hard, they are very hard. They can be only scratched by diamond. Only diamond can scratch them. So that, but they are in, in the category of ceramics. Okay, I hope you understand. Huh? So they are in the category of ceramic, but one of the toughest and hardest ceramic is tungsten carbide. Okay, so I hope you can understand what teacher have explained to you in part two. We will continue our video in our last part of the manufacture of substances in industries, which is part three. Till then, see you all. Thank you for watching.